Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the ET Markets webinar on where the market is headed in the medium term. Welcome, welcome, Mr. Sri Shankar. We will, he will give you a lowdown on where the market is headed in the medium term. We have a large audience waiting for you out here. I would like to request the audience to keep posting their questions all through the session in the chat room on the right hand side of the screen. The presentation will be followed by a question and answer session. Over to you, Mr. Sri Shankar. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the key question everybody's in mind is what is going to happen to the equity markets uh, going forward, probably for FI17, and more importantly, what's going to be the Q4 FI16 results? Will it surprise on the positive side? or will it continue to disappoint? Um, my own thought process uh, is that the volatile markets in the last three months have got more pain uh, rather than gain, and that too the worries on the global mood uh, still remains. Challenges remain, and the worries that we had affected your Chinese growth, European growth, and some of the emerging markets growth has not gone away in a month. The only th is that from a completely bearish outlook the market has had uh, towards uh, the whole of February, uh, things have turned for the better. Uh, there is expectation that China, Chinese hard landing as I may call it, uh, probably will get postponed and there is going to be a little more recovery seen in China and that has actually helped the commodities bounce back from the very lows that they have reached and you have seen uh, as a consequence of it the metal companies, the commodity companies have been giving much higher returns than uh, what the losses that they have been giving. So in a month a 20 percent plus return in many of these metal companies is given, especially the commodity companies. Uh, you have seen a recovery in oil prices, crude oil prices as well. But the interesting point here again is while uh, a, a low crude oil price scenario probably is indicating the slowness of the global economy, which is not a good news for the global economy, it has been uh, doing good for Indian economy, especially for the fiscal point of view. The fiscal deficit has been on much of the control, and things have started to remain much stable. And the uh, trade deficit has dropped to $7 billion from the eyes of $20 billion, etc. when the oil prices are high, the economy is booming, etc. But uh, the negative continues to be uh, the global growth and which, where the global growth is at. The Nifty touched a low of 6970 in February 25th. And ever since we had the uh, union budget on 29, things have been on the better. I'm not saying that all because of budget. Budget did give a uh, very positive view, the view coming from uh, a fiscal prudence rather than spending quite a lot. A moment on union budget. I think the big game changer for India has been the union budget for FI17. Why is it so? While probably two years back when the BJP government came into power, a lot of expect expectations were there in private sector investment which in, in help in growing the economy, etc. But what we have seen is uh, the economy per se and the global economy per se not doing anything great and on the contrary, the big countries like Brazil and Russia going into recession in 2015, again continuing into recession in 2016 calendar. So you've got challenges coming up and that challenge has probably resulted in the export view, that export focus that a lot of Indian companies had also slowing down. What it indicates is to a great extent the expectation that a large amount of exports stroke private investments will be coming didn't materialize. And here you have, as per the economic survey of 2016, uh, the, the, the class utilization of the Indian industry dropped into 70% from 73% earlier. To my mind, if the capacity utilization of the industry is so low, the chances of the private sector putting in large capex investments is quite bleak. So in an event like that, in a scenario like that, to kickstart the economy, it has to be the public sector. So here is a re renewed focus on by the public sector, strong government in infrastructure, roads, power, railways, and rural development. It's, it's more double-edged because these are all quite visible. It is quantifiable. And if you go for any election, 
these quantifiable, these views which are very clearly visible, will keep the government in good stead. And here you have uh, FIS 17 in Union budget, for more of a consolidation of fiscal prudence with developments, especially in infrastructure, rural development, and railways, which can be quite visible and quantified. Will have a huge multiplier. Now, a lot of people look away from the X2 business on the markets, and that's definitely my view is over for the time being, at least. And for better part of the next two years, likely to suit the going tough in terms of the uh, of global economy, unless you see uh, that the uh, world economy and the Chinese economy changing quite dramatically. Of views that markets will trade in the range. Our expectation was to trade in the range between 7200 to 7800 in the short term, but it has moved out of that particular range because there is a strong expectation of a global growth happening around there, and that has resulted in uh, uh, the earnings growing at a much faster pace, or rather the market growing at a much faster pace. In our view, to a great extent, all these things will depend upon where the Earnings growth, are, earnings growth is going to be in a 570. I'll straight away go into uh, where we think the earnings growth stories are going to remain. India has had two bad months. And months, while a lot of people in the urban areas is not that impacted by the bad months, but most people are um, salary, personal, etc. Uh, their regular incomes doesn't get much of it. But for a farmer or for a rural folk, bad consumer means bad, low amount of disposable income or surplus income in his hand. If you look at the commentary of FMCG companies and consumer stable companies for a great time, most of them are coming up and saying that they haven't seen the demand from the rural side slowing down. So while we expect FI17 to have a stronger growth in terms of uh, a demand growth coming from A, the seventh so pay commission implementations, B, the one rank, one pension implementation for the defense, and C, finally, is going to be a better monsoon impacting or benefiting the rural in area in terms of better productivity, better prices, and a better income for the farmers per se. So we think consumption is one thing which will continue to play and which should uh, be a great story for FI70. Notwithstanding the fact that FI70 will also see some recovery in cyclic assets coming back from the worst that we have seen in FI60. So we view a good month to be a turnaround story for the domestic consumption especially in the rural areas. We did not see any uh, change uh, in the way economy or market direction in the near term. We continue to see the near term market direction will be driven by global events. When worries over Chinese so economic growth slow, wanes away, you will see the market bounce in back. You will see uh, oil coming back into the floor. Uh, into interesting prices, oil prices tend to move up. So the worries on Middle East for the time being goes away. But on a sustained basis, it, it's very difficult, it's going to be very difficult to come back into the strong earnings growth story and economic growth that we have seen from 2004 to 2008. Because the tailwind in terms of the global growth is not very supportive. Coming back to Q4 earnings. Our universe of companies, excluding the bank BFSI, is likely to show a QOQ decline of 3.3% in revenues, 5.2% in EBITDA, and 8.1% in PAT, against a 1.1% increase in sales, 12.5% in increase, and 17.5% uh, increase in PAT. That's what we expect uh, uh, the companies in our universe to do. So what, what is a clear way of thinking for us from uh, um, a 2.4% revenue PM universe 
revenue decline again coming from uh, two segments basically declining 6.9 percent and oil and gas declining 23 point three purely a function of the lower commodity prices when compared to uh, 12 months back. Uh, while on a QOQ basis we are going to see 11.6 percent increase in metals and a take further a decline again in 15 percent in oil and gas, uh, resulting into a PL universe having a 1.4 percent increase. QOQ. So uh, the natural is PA profit after tax is going to decline 10.9 percent uh, by OY and QOQ it's going to be up 22.8 percent. Again, QOQ is an 83 percent increase in metals while on YOY it's 41 percent decline in metals. In oil and gas it's a 39 percent decline by YOY, but in QOQ it's a 30.3 percent increase. So uh, banks do also contribute in a big manner on the YOY decrease. That's the re simple reason the increased levels of provision. Now, uh, that's a nutshell. But again, uh, if uh, a fi uh, I've mentioned on, uh, if I go back to page number 27, um, in, uh, and this report is already there, uh, and why I'm mentioning page number 27, it's actually gives you a uh, summary of uh, where this uh, earnings uh, are going to come from for the next year, etc. And if you really look at the earnings, so the significant amount of earnings has to come from BF side. Banking is roughly 28.6% of the entire Nifty basket. We expect a 28% earnings growth in FI17, followed by a 26.9% in uh, FI18. Our own earnings growth for the index is around 21.1%. At the Taking it from 379.4 this year, and FI 16 to 459.5. Of the 21.1% growth, significant amount of growth comes from banking and financial services, automobiles 30.7%, and engineering and power 30.5%. Whereas pharma will uh, grow at a lower pace at 17.3, oil and gas lower again at 7.6, and FMCG plus steady growth of around 13%. IT, we expect to be a 10 percent growth. Metals, we have, uh, it's a, uh, coming from a loss, the growth can be anything. Uh, telecom is 1.1 percent, media is around 25.5, geo is there, and ports and logistics, there's a 11.2 percent. In a nutshell, here you have the kind of growth which we expect, a 21.1 percent growth for the market in FI 70, 18 percent growth for the market in FI 18, and market rates at a uh, uh, one year forward multiple of 16.4x. Now here again let me do an analysis of how the markets have behaved and traded over a 10 year time frame. Uh, the one year forward multiple of the Nifty at an average has been 18 times. Here we are trading at 16.5 which effectively tells us that markets, the, the potential for the market to give you a higher return is very much there provided you don't see the earnings estimates for FI17 getting revised downwards. And we also look at one of the other interesting things, the way the MSCI India trades at the premium to MSCI Asia in the terms of a price order multiple. The 10 year average has been over 34, but right currently it trades at 25. This also gives us much better opportunity. And in our view, uh, and that opportune moment in terms of a higher bit return is very much possible. For the Indian market. I'll now take questions. Hello? It was a very enlightening session. We will take up uh, audience questions now. The first question is from Mr. Pratik Nagpal. He says most macro indicators in the domestic economy are looking up, but what is nagging the market are mainly global cues. How should uh, one position oneself in the market in such a scenario? Um, uh, it's a very interesting point when you say the macro indicators are looking up, but uh, let me give you some uh, inputs like this. Um, if I look at even uh, the commercial vehicles, etc., probably I think FI13 we had. 5 lakh, 89,000 vehicles. So we have had a 30% kind of a growth this year. We still are at what? 5 lakh somewhere. 
So you, there is a long way to go to the levels that we reached even in FI20. So while because you know, FI50 was so bad, you probably would have seen a sharp recovery in FI60. To reach levels where we had reached earlier, there is still a long way to go. And that's uh, that's only the big one. That's number one. Number two, another point about uh, macro indicators looking up. I think we had the 14th or 16th month we have got uh, inflation, wholesale inflation at the negative territory. Now, um, that's also indicating that is it a demand led inflation? I don't think so. It's more of uh, yes, it's a demand led inflation, but the point remains there is even today a large supply in the commodity side. And that large supply in the commodity side with reduced demand growth is keeping the inflationary pressures on the lower side or on a deflationary side. And that's uh, even more a dangerous view. And I like inflation. I think inflation actually uh, uh, tells you, a demand led inflation always tells you the robustness or the boom in the economy. Uh, it, uh, a deflationary scenario actually starts to indicate to you the kind of toughness that is being seen in the economy. So to my mind, while you have seen the macroeconomic indicators, many of these things have started looking up from the bottom. Uh, you will actually start to wait and see how that leads to a consumption and uh, over a longer period. But now, I will be keenly waiting for FI 16, Q4 results update of many of these FMCG companies which will give us an indication of how the things are turning out. Yeah. All right. So we have a question from Mr. Sankush Bhayana. He want, he says, what is your outlook on Fed rate hike? And do you think another turmoil awaits the market as and when the Fed presses the hike button again? I think, uh, uh, see, I'm not an expert on the U.S. economy. But uh, so uh, having said that, I do look at the U.S. economy because it has a huge impact on whatever they do in our economy global economy and at the end of the day now markets. Um, let's be clear, I think US is leading the world growth in terms of the economic growth. And today Europe is not able to do it. There is turmoil happening and emerging markets are all uh, having another problem. Japan has another problem. So the world is looking to US the way the growth is going to be. And everywhere in the world, every central banker is trying to follow a loose monetary policy to improve their growth outlook. And in that environment, if the world economy is not going to grow at a faster pace, the chances of a tightening of, of I'm not saying that it will not happen, but I don't think there are headwinds to the, new, the global growth tightness is also going to get delayed unless you see a very funny situation with uh, an increased inflationary pressures in the US and there is a uh, complete opposite of a deflationary pressures happening around in the world then you are in a complete loss state of threat. So as long as the world doesn't see a serious amount of inflationary pressures chances of a Fed rate hike is going to get much less difficult. All right, sir. So another question uh, uh, from Mr. Kavish Mittal. He wants to know how big is a worry? Uh, how big of a worry is China? And uh, yesterday's big crash uh, again gave investors enough jitters. Do you think something big is brewing up there? Um, again, um, on China, China's. Uh, let's look at. Uh, look at China from a, uh, at an angle which is uh, going to be something I I interesting. Um, you, have, you have effectively see um, over the last 10 years, 15 years, China has become the world's factory. So China, I don't think, produces a lot of things for their own consumption. They produce for the world's consumption. And uh, even a lot of things that you buy here, whether it's online or not, it's probably made in China. So Chinese products are there everywhere in the world. So that if the world's growth slows down, Chinese growth also will slow down. So the key question is, 
how is the world going to grow? If the world is going to grow faster, I'm sure China will also grow faster. The world is not going to grow fast, fast enough. The Chinese world has to slow down, and that's something which you need to bear in mind while we start talking about the markets. I, it is similar to what my thinking in terms of if the world growth is slowing down, no way Indian exports can increase. That's also going to be a challenge. I hope I've answered the question. Uh, yes, sir. So we have Mr. Mayank Sharma. He wants to know: Has the rape cut cycle bottomed out in India? Do you think there's scope for more rape cut by Reserve Bank of India this year? See. Uh, at the given circumstances, to my mind, the rate cut cycle is more than that. That's number one. Number two, I myself asked this question, is there any scope further for rate cut? And the answer I give myself for that answer, the question is, if the global growth numbers get revised downwards, which means that there is going to be increased headwinds happening. In that environment, if you want to have a higher growth than what is there, then probably the central banks will have to think in terms of newer measures, including India, to increase the growth. In that environment, there could be an opportunity. But I do not think that you will not be if your fiscal scenario doesn't improve. If the fiscal scenario improves, yes, there could be another scope for, for the rate cuts. Otherwise, not now. All right. I hope this answer, answers Mr. Sharma's question. Uh, we have Mr. Prakash Rathi. He wants to know what kind of stocks can one look at from a dividend earning point of view? Uh, is it dividend yield or dividend earning? Dividend earning. That's what he is written. Uh, OK. Again, from a dividend yield point of view, probably. Uh, I think we still are in the growth market. So my thought process is uh, people tend to look at more of uh, uh, dividend yield stocks, so which gives you higher dividend at a price, and the yields are much higher. Uh, when the markets are completely beaten down and not looking up, probably this is not going to look very good for the other. My thought process, I think, um, I will still go for the growth stories. The dividend, uh, uh, see, one of the stocks which you like and which we have released a report recently is Navneet Education. We like it. We have like uh, FMCG companies, steady straight returns, and I think uh, the banks will still continue to like it. Uh, the way uh, the banks, etc., probably another one decade plus till 2030, I think the demand will continue to grow faster. FMCG companies continue to demand growth will be there. Consumption stories, whether it is media, whether it is uh, uh, banks, whether it is FMCG, whether it is, uh, you name it, your uh, service providers, etc. Everywhere the demand story continues to be good. So to, to our mind, these are all uh, good dividend paying companies, good dividend stories. Now, whether dividend yield wise, uh, which are the ones, I'll need to go back and look at it because the unfortunate part is that the companies are going to have stronger ROE, stronger ROC, good earnings growth. Those stocks don't come cheap, so the yield on those dividends uh, tend to be pretty low. All right, sir. I think you've answered all this question in the last. Um, your last answer, but Mr. Farid Alam wants to know which are the particular sectors, say five sectors that you're looking at in terms of uh, a long term or a medium term scenario. A long term or medium term scenario. Okay. Um, see, we continue to like uh, banking, and uh, I don't see any reason why banks should not be looked at it. We like automobiles, uh, we continue to like FMCG. I think uh, pharma is going to have some headwinds, but uh, Companies in the pharma space, which we don't have an actual, uh, active coverage right now. Um, uh, uh, some of these companies, like uh, 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 Beat, uh, the new IPO which is coming, or Dr. Lal Patlops, it looks interesting. It's expensive stocks because today the uh, kind of a growth, I'm not recommending these stocks, but I think we, we like it. We don't have an active coverage on it. 
probably will have some coverage at some point in time. Uh, then uh, we also like uh, some of the stocks in Sibin. Um, uh, I mentioned about some stocks in healthcare again, not the leading companies like the Sun, Lupin, um, Cadillac, and Redis, not our preferred picks right now. But we like Arabindo, we like Glenmark, we like uh, Jubilee. In auto, we like uh, um, uh, Tata Steel, still like Tata Motors. Those are global story. All right, so Mr. Uh, Nakpar Patel, he wants to know uh, what, according to you, is the biggest trigger for the stock market? Next mm, biggest, the biggest trigger. trigger. The next biggest trigger for global growth, domestic earnings. All right. And out, I hope that answer, Mr. Patel. Yeah. Hello, can you hear us? Yeah. Yeah, so I hope that answer Mr. Pa answers Mr. Patel's uh, question. The next question is from Mr. Utkansh Joshi. He wants to know the best stocks to buy in a one-year timeline. I think we have a, a, we tend to recommend stocks only from our coverage list, and uh, uh, we have in our coverage list a picture of our topics. Uh, we like Infosys, we like HDFC that. Tata Motors, STL Technologies, LAS, Maruti Suzuki, IOC, Indusind Bank, Arabindo Pharma, Dabur, Britannia, ACC, GSK Consumer, Cummins, uh, Glenmark, uh, Return Trilogy. And similarly, we have, we have Jubilee Lives at so Subbam. We like Spice Tattoo, JK Lakshmi, Capital First, VR, Water Grab Abbott, Jibber, Kashmir Pad. These are all bars. Uh, stop and which we like that we should have to Yeah. Uh, Mr. Sandeep Arora wants to know is, is there a bubble building up? Uh, he says there's no clarity on how the government will respond in case China triggers a global recession. So he wants to know what is your take on the entire situation? Uh, I did mention about um, me, my view is that it's not China who's going to trigger a global recession. I think uh, China. Uh, the global growth slows down. Obviously, exports from China is going to slow down, and that itself will start having a problem in China. And that's what we are seeing right now because the global growth has slowed down. So consequently, the Chinese demand has slowed down uh, because China is the world's factory at the end of the day. So clearly, that I said was why because I said global growth. So global growth would be the key. So if global growth slows down, obviously China's problems will come out. And when it comes out, you're, you're not going to be insulated. Really, you will be lesser impact. That's it. All right. So I hope this answers uh, Mr. Arora's question. So, sir, the next question is from Mr. Vikas Vijayan. He wants yep. to know where do you see the stock markets and market and its annual returns in the next five years? Wow, that's a, it's like a long haul. See, the way I see it is I think India is relatively going to have a relatively better growth when compared to a lot of other emerging markets. So my expectation is that you should tend to see around 12 to 15 percent return of the market on a sustained basis. Now you may see a volatility in earnings coming up. If things go down, as uh, an earlier gentleman asked a question, what happens if China uh, uh, gives you a big recession? Et that means your world is going to have a problem. If your world is going to have a big problem, then you can't expect that kind of a return in isolation to India alone. My expectation is that that kind of a global recession doesn't happen right now. We need to, every, because every economist stroke every central banker is trying to have a broader loose monetary policy to push up their economies. So you probably will have currency wars happening around currency weakenings across the spectrum, which we have already seen. And uh, fiscal prudence is what India has been following. So you have relatively lesser amount of problems in your currency. So my view, difficult to give a 15, uh, year, five year view, but I would still think that at an average you should have 12 to 50 percent returns uh, or a return even during tough times of the markets. So, sir, the next question is: which are the uh, which are the five top stocks that you would advise?
twice for a first time investor? Um, uh, I have to work with three You will get this presentation uh, on ET Markets uh, Facebook page and Twitter pages, so you can uh, pick and choose the stocks that you uh, would like to play on. The next question is from Mr. Gagan Sharma. Uh, he wants to know the government is spending a lot on infrastructure projects, but we are not seeing a surge in the prices of infrastructure stocks. Why is that? Um, I don't believe that we have seen uh, uh, a Sumit Rane, he wants to know when do you expect earnings revival for India Inc? Answers Mr. Rane's question. Uh, the next question we have from Mr. Sanjay Shekhar. He says, Do you think the RBI move to trim the list of national loan defaulters will reduce the bad loan burden on banks? How bad a pain do you expect on the banking counter in Q4? See, it's a pain. Uh, whether it's a uh, uh, technical loan process, it's a uh, uh, you grow or whatever it is, it's uh, not a big uh, level factor. Uh, so, my personal view that you actually have uh, led to someone and that uh, is not coming back. That's like the problem. So, you can't lend the money to somebody else right now. So, your ability to lend gets uh, reduced. And uh, however, that you, uh, uh, however, especially that you must get now with regard to accounting policies and what kind of thing, if uh, it shows you how bad underwriting capability. And uh, the interesting point is, so unless this evaporating capability is uh, clear up better, there is no guarantee that the next code that you give to many other things will also not fall into the kind of that. So, uh, for, for a moment, you keep in mind whether the RTI company speaks about RTIs or uh, whichever kind of companies and whichever kind of sectors, etc. Uh, it should be more clear than you got Prudent underwriting capabilities of uh, the bank, uh, which uh, rather than uh, looking at only one, they can have them and point like this. All right, sir. We have a lot of questions coming in, but uh, we, we are really short of time. So I'll take up the last three questions for the day. Uh, this uh, question is by Mr. Vivek Menon. He, he says, going by the latest IT numbers, uh, what is your outlook on the sector going forward? IT companies. So all of them are going to be made. I think it's not going to be very easy for them to 
and method is a great expert on that don't write numbers. So you will actually see a steady earnings growth coming from many of these companies. Because the earnings growth which has gone down from or down from 20% to 25% is 20%. Now there is 10 to 15% so it's going to be a steady state growth rather than anything exceptional due to that. So you will tend to see that productivity is starting to come up. From one of the that there will be less in terms of one large account getting benefited or not, which will have a positive or negative impact on these kind of companies. Otherwise, the other estimate is closer to 10% growth by 10.3. Okay, sir, we have a question from Ms. Priyanka Mehra. She wants to know how do you read the recent FII behavior in the Indian market, and do you think there are um, uh, they they are here to stay this year, or will they be playing hide and seek? Uh, Last question for the day is from Mr. Ajay Bhargava. He wants to know what is your year end target for Nifty? Um, my year end target for Nifty, now, um, very difficult to give, but I expect a 15% return on this, so I should say that uh, you, you, uh, you, uh, you're looking at probably around 8,800 uh, closer to that side. Wow, that is, that is quite, a, quite a target. Uh, I hope that answers everyone's questions <laughs> around here. Uh, many, many thanks, Mr. Sri Shankar. Again, I'm expecting not a huge amount of problems with the global tech. If the global tech has a problem, then we need to really get the All right, all right. Thank you so much, Mr. Sri Shankar. And also, right. and also to our esteemed audience, especially those who took part in it very actively. We have not been able to take a whole lot of questions for the dearth of time. We do hope to address them next time. For a link to this webinar and Mr. Sri Shankar's presentation, do follow us on our Twitter and Facebook pages. We hope to have you all back next week. Have a great day ahead. Thank you.